look at this flower for now. It's real pretty. I'm out here today doing uh, tree inspections in the area. Free of charge, it's the service I provide. Right, so here for example, <clears throat> this is a sign of infection. I feel terribly for this tree, but I hope it lives out its remaining days in bliss and harmony with the rest of the forest animals. This tree is very healthy. It's growing its own mushrooms, as you can see here. Very cool. There are about one million mosquitoes out here. They're all just trying to grab a bite to eat. Look at him go, filling up on a belly full of the good stuff. You can see how much of me is in him. Look at that. Oh, uh, I gotta, I gotta get out of here though. I mean, I've only got so much to give before I'm all gone. It's good. I spent some time enjoying the fresh air, the sun shining down through it onto me and all the critters down below, whether they're on one, two, or more legs. And some of them fly around little wings and st stick their their long pokey butts into your skin. And Actually, I don't think, I think mosquitoes have like a little straw in their noses. They stick into your skin and slurp up your blood. And then what do mosquitoes do with it? Do they take it back to a mosquito hive and build bloody mosquito hives out of it? Now that's, now that's a concept. Or do they just, cause that, that one mosquito had a lot of blood in its belly and does it just, does it just go home and have a, like when I have a lot of Chinese food, I just sit around for like an hour afterwards and it's, it's a really good feeling and a really bad feeling at the same time. And I can imagine a, f a fat full of blood mosquito slouching down up on a tree limb somewhere, just letting it, letting it percolate and letting it marinate in his belly. Anyways, I want to say that before I sat down to make this drawing, I'm using Posca paint markers on foam core poster board. Those are the paint, those are the art supplies for today's project. I mentally took a art laxative, and by that I mean I wanted to keep things loose. I wanted to keep things flowing. All right, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want things tight and constricted. I just wanted to let it go, let it all out. Didn't want to think about things. I didn't want to worry about keeping the the details too crisp and, and crunchy and fine. All right, sometimes that's really fun to, to get lost in crisp, fine details, but this time, no, I just, wanted to, I, just, I just wanted to scribble away on the poster board. I like both of those sides of the art coin, the fine and the loose, all right? This one was a little looser, had a lot of fun with it. At one point, I have a lot of different sizes of these Posca pens, I'm kind of addicted to them. They're probably my favorite paint pen, whether just for scribbling on things, they draw on almost anything. My skin, your skin, uh, the walls, um, the, the, the white Posca pens are what I use now for um, if you want to draw white lines on paper. Like a lot of people use jelly rollers and Sigma uh, something or others. I use the very fine tipped, like the 0 0.7 millimeter white Posca pens. I think that's what they're called. I call them Posca pens even, even though they're kind of markers. It's okay. It's okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, at one point I used like the big fat one. This one, uh, it's called, uh, it's a PC-17K, 15 millimeter. It's got a 
it says chisel shaped, but it's, I guess that just means it doesn't have a round tip. When I think chisel shaped, I think it's got, it goes off at like a, like a, a, a wreckish angle. This one doesn't really, but I use that to block in a bunch of uh, big, big black chunks in the drawing, which that is kind of pre oomphing the drawing, right? You put the pre oomph in and then you come back in with the other little marker that I started with and add in a bunch of details around it. The big black parts, they sink in there towards the back of the drawing. Uh, they be, uh, they, they, they're like the shading that I am reluctant to put in later sometimes because um, I, I add all these careful details and then when I need to put in shading, I don't want to put in the shading because it means I have to cover up some details that I carefully drew. So sometimes I circumvent that by putting the shading in beforehand. All right, I trick myself. It's okay. And it works for things like doodling because, uh, you know, I don't really care or know where or when things are going or whence they came from. But it might be a little more difficult for things uh, that are supposed to look like an actual sort of thing. Who knows? You figure out your own strategies, but always be it, you know, be looking for ways to switch it up, you know, uh, for different approaches, whether it's with different art supplies or just different, uh, switch up like the order in which you draw different parts of the drawing. If you can, if you don't, it's good to, it's good to have a good strategy and formula that works too, right? If it ain't working, don't fix it. I just like these big drawings because, uh, they're, they're fun to look at. There's something about big drawings that they suck you in a little more. The closer you stand to them, they take up more of your field of vision and uh, it feels like you could fall into it a little bit. Or uh, and Also, it just takes up more of your wall if you put it on the wall somehow. Uh, I don't know, this is a, these I think are 20 inches by 30 inches. Of course, I, these are hard to hang on the wall. I just kind of put them on shelves and lean them against things because that's Frames, frames. Can we talk about why, why are frames so expensive? And and then so many people started going to like thrift shops and just getting the framed art there and and either painting on that for comedic comedic effect or just popping the art out of those and using the frames. That some people started doing that. That even those started getting expensive. I don't know. It's like whole some whole big. Thing. You can make your own frames though. I'm, maybe I should start doing that now that I have like a little workshop back there to work in. Hmm. I'm suddenly thinking about those mosquito blood hives again now. I'm pretty sure if bees make hives with hexagons, mosquito blood hives would probably be made out of pentagrams, wouldn't they be? I don't know. All right, that's all for me. Uh, goodbye, everybody. All right, have a good day.